again I have returned with the legendary gown. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally putting our new substrate for isopods to the test. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now I have got to let you guys know to save any confusion. Yet again, I have been filming bulk in advance. So pretty much all videos that you may have seen lately were filmed in late February, early March, um, all the way leading up till BTS. So once the BTS days video goes out, which will not be of the show because I need time to edit it. On the 22nd of May is at the point then where I will be carrying on from after the BTS. Everything leading up to the 22nd of May is pre-recorded in February and March. And that is for a very, very good reason. That is because I need to knuckle down on my research, which is what this video is gonna be about with, with our substrates, put it all to the test correctly and working on the seven deadly sins and closures ideas all the way till BTS. So by the time BTS hits, I will know whether this substrate has worked or not. And I'll be able to update you pretty much straight after that, letting you know whether this was a success or not. So we're not gonna jibber jabber on any further. I am going to get down a bunch of isopod enclosures place them on this desk and we are going to be housing a bunch of isopods in this new substrate. Oh, I am excited. Ta-da! So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight isopod enclosures. I kind of like to call them my pod pods. So they're actually old shoe boxes with plastic lids. So I've solder ironed my ventilation in. What I've done is I've given more ventilation on one side, less ventilation on another, because we always have a, a more hydrated side to a dry side. Um, anyway, this isn't about setting up, this is about the test. So I have to crouch by where I am on the camera. So let's open up these two top ones and let's discuss this substrate. Okay, so here we are. Now this, just is so light so fluffy it just falls apart in my hands now this is the best substrate i have ever blended in my life now i have been slowly revealing the odd ingredient to this substrate on different isopod videos and i'll reveal another one today and that is dolomite so dolomite is basically calcium carbonate, but with added magnesium, which is really, really good for soil conditioning. So they will need the calcium carbonate. They're always gonna need a calcium source. This helps with their molting and the strength of their exoskeleton, basically. So you always wanna have a calcium source. So dolomite is added in my substrate. Now you might be sitting there going, you're still not telling us everything that's in here. And the reason being, as I've said before, is this is under test phase. This is the official test phase. So what we're gonna be doing is adding in our isopods into these enclosures, right? And then I'm gonna be watching them, monitoring them, and seeing if this substrate works. Now I know for a fact already by what's in here that this substrate will work. I know it, right? I know for a fact this isopod substrate will work, but will it be extra beneficial than the substrates you find on the market? Will it increase breeding more than you buying your compost or your potting soils or your topsoils, etc., etc. This is a living soil. This is a really highly nutritious soil. And I want to see if it affects the isopods overall health or whether we are just adding additives for the sake of it. So I already know, as I said, this substrate will work. I already know that adding these extra bits in is gonna be more beneficial to the isopods, is gonna keep them happier, is gonna keep them healthier, I know that. But what I wanna see is, will it enhance breeding? That's my main key. Is it going to enhance the growth rate, the speed, the breeding? Will it adjust those that are seasonal breeders to wanna breed that little bit more? Is it really time scale that makes them seasonal? Is it the weather fluctuations of hot to cold that makes it seasonal or is it how nutritious the soil is? There are so many different questions to be answered 
and I'm not going to know until I test this out. So let's put the camera back down on these substrates. So I'm just going to be dampening down then one side. I'll only show you me doing this on the first two and then we'll have a look at some of the animals that are going into them. I'm just literally pouring this and pouring instead of misting means it's going to go right through. It's going to sink right down. So there is my moist side. Now we will be adding extra moss to this side, which I will do after the video. But now we need hides. So I need to, I should have flattened this out a little bit first because I don't want them climbing out the vent holes. A hide. So this hide is going to have half on the wet side, half on the dry side. And then we will do that with this hide here as well. There's a bit on the wet side, bit on the dry side. So let's put in our isopods. So these are the ones we picked up at the show, Porcelio Enchinatus. Let's take a quick little look at them. So you would have seen these in my show pickups video. So because there might be mankai, baby ice pods in the substrate, we are literally just going to be gently tipping it all in, all of it, like so. And you can see them starting to scurry. Now I want to leave the hide open at both sides. So they're currently on the dry side and this substrate was a bit drier so that's why I've put it there. And there they are. So when we revisit this after the BTS show in May, May 22nd, maybe a week, two weeks after we visited the show, we're going to look back on all of these colonies. So there is 10 currently in here. Now it's not to say anything will have bred by the time May comes around. However, we can look at their overall health and you can see where I've added the moss and things like that. So we don't want this video to go on forever, but I need to remember which pods in which one. So let's put that one on the top like that. So we're going to move on then, which one to put in here. So I'm going to go straight with the Porcelia Nides Crinosis mixture of blue and grey. So there are 20 in here. So remember 20 folks for when we next do an update video. Cyanides, Pruinosis. Tipping in. Ooh, tip that a little bit heavier than I planned to, but that's fine. They will be okay. Now they are scurrying away. Okay, so we need to remember that one. So we're going to put the lid on the top until it's labelled. So we've now moved on. Now this is the difference between how you were seeing them and a fully set up one. I decided to set one fully up with the moss to show you how I do it. Obviously, as I said, I'll be adding the moss and bits to the others after, but that will make an incredibly long video to set them all up like that. Now I've actually got two curved bits of bark in this one, one over on the moist side, let's move it slightly further along, and one on the dry side. So this is kind of how they will properly look. More leaf litter, moss, that's the only changes that will happen from this to this because everything else is already in this beautiful beautiful substrate oh i love it so much going into this one is our pattern mix of armadillidium vulgari so let's pop them straight in now you might not find this video that exciting you might be like okay so we get to see some isopods whoop de do but you're not revealing everything in this substrate. I'm not going to go into the details again why, but you know why, and just trust me, because if we break through here, if we break through into something that is viable as well as efficient, then perhaps I can start putting my substrates on the market for you guys. What do you think about that? If this substrate really does work to the way I'm hoping it to, then maybe I can start looking into selling these substrates to you guys. Now this substrate does actually cost me a lot of money. I can't see any of the armadillidium there, but trust me, they are there and there are 10 of them, but these guys like to kind of bury down a little bit. There's one, there we go. Our pattern mix. So yeah, as I was saying, I want to be able to establish this perfectly for my colonies and then eventually maybe I can start selling some to you guys. Um, and a point I was trying to make, ooh, don't trip Sam, don't trip on the wires. Um, sorry, I get excited, so I go off track. The point I was trying to make was, I don't know if it will be financially viable because this has cost me quite a lot, quite a lot. Right, we need a hide in this one. 
Okay, I've just slapped a little hide in because I need to get some more, but this end here is on the wet. This is where the wet bit ends and this bit goes on to the dry. Now we're gonna be putting in our milk back isopods in here, our Porcelio Lavis milk backs. Can we see any? There they are, the milk backs. Okay, popping in now. Oh, sorry guys, sorry, sorry, sorry. I should really have put the camera back on a stand so that this wasn't so aggressive, but honestly, they're fine. So there they are. Now their substrate was a little bit moist, so I should have probably put that on the moist side, but it's fine. This is the higher vented side, this will dry out better. So there are our milk backs. Now you'll see me keep spreading bits when I put them in. That's because I don't want things going too high. You see this little strand here that was up here? This could then lead them to the ventilation holes and we do not want them escaping. Luckily, the lids on these shoe boxes have extra height. So, that one's done. Now we have four more to house. So I've just had a feel of each of these enclosures and this one is naturally drier. So we're gonna put in also the drier looking hide, nice, big hide this time. I've not watered down this side, it is ever so slightly moist, but that's because we are putting a dry species in here. And that species is our Porcelio spatulatus, one of the giants in the isopod world. More in wideness, in width, than in height. Now, let's get out these guys. Oh, this one's halfway through a molt, can you see? So isopods are fascinating because they molt half and half. So this one has molted one end and not molted the other end so we don't want to disturb that one too much Just put it in like so put the moss where the slightly damper area will be now the damp area in this one being spanish isopods will not be that damp we will do maybe a corner rather than a section so try not to raise it too much here are the other ones and kind of gently, oh, sorry guys, let's tip you in. There we go. There we go. So here are our Porcelio spatulatus. Now these guys are slow breeders naturally. Let's see if our substrate can make a difference. So spread this out a little bit. Okay, okay. Celio spatulatus. Really cool when they're bigger, they look normal now, but they get nice big slightly flared white skirts when they're fully grown and they just look remarkable. You can see that one starting to get its white skirt now. Really, really cool. So that one kept drier, the Spanish species. Right on the top so I can remember. And then in this one, Again, again, I'm going to keep saying it in case anyone skipped through the video. We're going to be adding a mossy side and more leaf litter after this video. So I've got a nice mossy looking hide this time. Like so. Which species is going to go in here then? So you've seen me rehouse all the ones from the show. But you haven't seen me house anything different. So what is going in these last three? Well, what was temporarily homed in here is our Porcelio Scaber Moo Cows. Now I actually bought them as dairy cows, but I spoke to the guy who created this morph, and when it's Scaber, it's known as Moo Cow. And I actually prefer these to Porcelio Lavis Dairy Cow. I just think they're a bit more prominent, and I like the shape of Scaber. I really enjoy this, the shape of Scaber. Now there's quite a lot of substrate in here, so I'm going to have to be manoeuvring these a little differently, I think. Let's get the mossy bits, put it on the mossy side. Okay, okay. Just get your leaf litter. Plunk it all in like so. There he is. Now I'm gonna do the last bit of this myself off the camera so that we can move straight on. But there we go, Porcelio Scaba Dairy Cow, Moo Cow. Um, just so you know as well, we need to talk about numbers. So the Porcelionides prurinosis had 20. Okay, one of those has got 20 in. All the rest have 10, apart from the spatulatus that has 12. We're going back to 10 here. There'll be 10 in this one, and then there will be 20 going into this one. So we are all low numbers. So when we check back on this and check for how well they've grown up and if any breedings happen, it'll be super exciting. Okay, so next one then is this one, and we will be putting in our Porcelio Scaber Dalmatian. Again, put in their little temporary home. 
how many we got there one two three four four six seven and they've bred okay so what would have been ten we already have babies and this was in my basic substrate mix oh this is fantastic this is fantastic news okay so we are already breeding our Dalmatians let's just pop that in like so now I'm gonna have to be super careful making sure that I get all the mankai out of here I tell you what this is gonna be another one I'm gonna have to kind of skip guys because I cannot risk moss for the mossy side I cannot risk missing any babies in here but there is another look at the Dalmatian yeah there's babies everywhere look oh my god okay full substrate transfer for this one so Dalmatians again just want to show you you can see the speckles that's why they're Dalmatians the tiny little dots the tiny little black speckles I just didn't think I picked that up well enough before so I'm gonna transfer that one and then we're gonna do our very last isopod okay so I've had to do a full substrate transfer into this one so it no longer lo looks as nice as it did before bit of added moss bit of added leaf litter this will look right at home so that is fantastic news then absolutely fantastic news that the babies are mixed in with this substrate super super cool thrilled in fact to have our dalmatians there so last but not least then going into this one will be our porcelain escape of ghost and i've got two lots of 10 of those in my time from mystery boxes so there should in theory be 20 ghosts going in here let's get these guys a nice big mossy chunk as well look at that Hopefully we don't need to do a full substrate mix in here because that's already looking super pretty. It's got a lovely curve to it, wet and dry side. So let's get this tub open and have a look at our ghosts. There's, is that a baby over there or is that a springtail? I think that might have actually been a baby. Oh my God we have mankai again so this is my basic substrate mix this was my previous substrate mix so this was the first substrate mix i ever did for isopods and it's not a bad mix it's just this one is better so i haven't had these very long and they are already breeding in my original mix so the fact that i know that this has brought breeding on pretty quickly really excites me about this substrate now you've got to bear in mind i'm not saying it's all about the substrate to make them breed but this is an experiment this is a test phase and we want to see if we can have populations grow even quicker now i've kept porcelain lavis dairy cows for years now and i know their sort of reproduction speeds so hopefully hopefully Oh, you know what I'm just so excited this video is probably not making much sense you'll have to bear with me guys I'm just really super stoked about this so ghosts are pretty you can see they've eaten most of that leaf there because they have these well ghostly patterns basically there's a baby look oh my god it's a man guy so they have this kind of lighter caramel tone really nice right I'm gonna have to get these guys in focus look at that how did I do that skilled magic i'm going to do this off the camera because i've got to be super super careful with these mankai back with you in a moment okay it doesn't look too bad uh <laughs> i've just buried a lot of the leaf litter so again as i keep saying leaf litter and moss to be added after this video i just wanted you guys to have a look at the ice pods while we talked about substrates ah oh, exciting stuff super super exciting stuff <laughs> right Back to me, back to me, enough of these. Okay, I've took a moment to calm down. I've had to take the gown off because I am sweating from just sheer excitement of that video. So I took some time to compose myself so I can speak to you properly without the constant distractions. So the point of today's video was to introduce, how many we do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We introduced eight cultures to my new substrate blend and we are going to leave it for a few months a few months in my time will be less in your time because of when i pre-recorded this to test whether breeding has picked up whether overall health of the isopods seem well mortality rate did we lose more than we gained um 
we're going to be checking how viable this soil is. I want to work out how long it lasts as well because a very good organic living soil will need to be replenished again around eight months to a year later. So that is something also going to be going through this test phase. And if all is successful, then perhaps I will reveal the rest of the special ingredients in this substrate. Perhaps I can even start passing some on and selling some on to you guys at home. So thanks for watching this video. I know I was really sketchy with excitement, probably wasn't getting to the point, but you know what? I like to share things as they are. You know I like to keep it as raw as I can. So uh, we're gonna end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned to see how the test results turn out in just a few months time and then again a few months later. Take care guys, see you in the next one, bye bye.